Hey, are you a big dumb idiot? Well, if you still think Obamacare is awesome, then yes, you are. Or you're not an idiot, and you know Obamacare is worse than having Woody Allen as your kid's camp counselor, but you just can't admit it because you voted for Obama twice. A few days ago, the Congressional Budget Office told us that as a result of the subsidies in the Affordable Care Act, 2.5 million Americans would leave their jobs or switch from full-time to part-time work. So basically, now that the government will be giving them free health care, they no longer need to go to that inconvenient workplace every day to get all those silly little green pieces of paper that they can then exchange for goods and services. Thank God, because all those people with jobs was becoming a serious problem. <laughs> when the CBO announced this, you could almost hear the entire Democratic Party contract collective Tourette's. This is really bad for them politically. But, as Democrats always do when bad news about Obamacare comes out, they have to smile and pretend to like it because Obama's presidency rides on its survival. If Obama's presidency begins to be seen as a historic failure, then that's more time liberals have to spend calling Republicans racist when they could be doing more enjoyable things like eating paint chips. So, Obama and friends immediately went into damage control mode and rolled out this term called job lock which sounds like a disease that hookers get. They explained that people working less is really a good thing. Jay Carney explained it the way he always does, with a straight face. Opportunity created by affordable quality health insurance allows families in America to make a decision about how they will work or if they will work. I like how he used the word families. Like, thanks to Obamacare, six-year-old Billy doesn't have to go toil in the coal mines anymore. So, the theory here is that there are a lot of people who are staying in a job they don't like, specifically to get health care benefits from their employer, but they were making too much money to qualify for the Obamacare subsidies. So now, these people will be able to take another job for less money, or just not work at all and qualify for Obamacare. Yay, government! Woo. But the problem with that is that the more you earn, the less sweet, sweet Obamacare money you get. So there's no incentive to work harder or improve your economic standing, because if you do, your precious Obamacare gets taken away from you and you die. Democrats like to call this freedom. And they're right. Remember when John Adams uttered his famous quote? America is founded on the principle that an individual should just dump their whack-ass job at Urban Outfitters and instead start an awesome rap group while lighting up fat spliffs until mom gets home with the Tostino's pizza rolls. Now, despite my disagreement with John Adams on everything in that last statement except the pizza rolls, which are delicious, this whole incident is basically the Democrats conceding an argument that conservatives have been having with them for 50 years. The left has just admitted that we've been right all along when we say government subsidies discourage work. And this isn't just another red versus blue argument. This is like the most fundamental argument that the conservatives make against the nanny state, and liberals have just admitted that we're totally right. Now before, if a conservative was brave enough to say something to the effect of, you know, if we give people money for not doing anything, it may give them less of a reason to become productive members of society, liberals would, like, freak out, and they'd say, you hate the poor, and you want them to get AIDS and die, and Paul Ryan wants to put them in a rocket ship and shoot them into the sun. Liberals assured us that the people collecting the subsidies were doing their darndest to find a job and would never take advantage of the taxpayer. Because why would anyone do that when they could go to work and make only slightly less than they would if they kept collecting the subsidy? Oh, the stupid hurts my brain. Now, the Democrats are fully committed to this new job lock talking point, but the evidence suggests that this was part of the plan all along. Now, Nancy Pelosi is the human equivalent of Obamacare. Very few people like her, and yet she's nearly impossible to get rid of. And like the bill, no one's really sure how she's put together. Now, Pelosi may have revealed the Democrats' hand a few years ago when she was talking about Obamacare and touted it as representative of the spirit of entrepreneurship that is supported by people having the freedom to change jobs, create a business, be self-employed, play music, write poetry, wherever their aspirations or talents take them. That's why we passed this thing? Because we had a huge shortage of young people wanting to become rock stars? You know, that kind of thinking is exactly how we ended up with Nickelback. And poets? Poets. I went and got me some Obamacare. Now the rich are paying their fair share. I sit in this coffee shop all damn day. You're an embarrassment to all of us, my parents say. You suck! I know! I mean, if more musicians and poets is the goal, then we don't need universal health care. We just need to legalize drugs. So this new democratic spin just takes out the part about poetry and leaves in the idea of these people getting better jobs and starting businesses. This makes no sense. If you're getting government subsidies to survive, it's pretty unlikely that Obamacare alone is going to free up enough capital for you to start up your own business. 
Also, if you're at the end of the economic spectrum where Obamacare is an option or close to being an option, there probably aren't that many other career choices available to you that are better than the job you previously had that didn't provide you with health coverage. Now, at this point, the Democrats who are still defending Obamacare are exactly the same as Republicans who were denying that the Iraq War was turning into an epic fuster cluck around 2006. And that's one of my biggest problems with politics. Sometimes, particularly on the big issues, partisans are so concerned with defending their preferred party or the president they supported or just their own pride that they are unwilling to admit when they got something wrong. And they'll make all sorts of insane excuses in order to defend the policy. It's like Yoko Ono saying that the Beatles breaking up was awesome because if it hadn't happened, Ringo would have never had a solo career. If buying Obamacare made Americans spontaneously burst into flames, Harry Reid would be out the next day saying how it was helping to lower people's heating costs during the cold winter. The lengths they are willing to go to to spin this are mind-boggling. In fact, I don't even remember what it was we were talking about. Oh yeah, let's go set Yoko Ono on fire. Wait, no. Job lock is BS. But also, and let's go do that first thing too. Stairs, it's half you'd even care when the lights are up and the sun and For my next poem, I'd like to put... Okay, okay, I deserve that. Totally deserve that.